When Dr. Jonas Salk created the polio vaccine using cells from Henrietta Lacks, the world was excited that the March of Dimes research had finally paid off and a vaccine to help children prevent disability, living life in an iron lung, and death had been discovered. Most countries in the decades since had positive aspects and outlooks on vaccine acceptance, and shots were given regularly to school children at, a pair, at differing times, and then a booster on their 18th birthday to send them off into the world, knowing that they would be safe from tetanus, measles, mumps, and other uh, complications and viruses that had long ago caused death and disability in our youth population. This survey done in 2020 asked how did people feel about the importance of vaccines to the health in our society? If you notice at that time, 71% reported that vaccines were very important to the health of our society. 21% reported that they were somewhat important to the health of our society. And less than 10% reported that they were not too important, not important at all, are not sure. So what has changed in society for that minority of group of our society that have become vaccine hesitant, vaccine reluctant, or even vaccine refusal about vaccine safety, efficacy, and the need in today's world? When we think about the 1950s, when the polio vaccine was discovered, our communication and ways of obtaining information about the world, but particularly medical information in the media, was much different then than it is now. Then there were only three main television channels that started the day at 6 a.m. and went off at midnight to the Star Spangled Banner. The news was thought to be objective, with selective news readers or journalists discussing with experts the concerns and medical issues of the day, and the public seated at the living room, intently watching their television for what to know and understand about a medical condition, virus, or vaccine. Now, with the number of media sources, including cable, other forms of television, internet, YouTube, or podcast, there are a number of different methods, journalists, and methods of gaining information that you can discuss the medical issues and topics with people responding with their own opinions to those topics from those experts. But these opinions aren't always based on facts. And when posted on social media, with the number of different posts and other assorted ways that we obtain our information, all opinions, as well as facts, may appear equal. In addition, Negative opinions generally are amplified due to their shock value or having a illustrative title that might have more people clicking on those posts than another type of article or post with a fact because trolling or repeated clicking on the negative uh, target for shock value has actually increased the likelihood that people might see the negative information or opinions versus the fact and opinions on media such as Facebook, Twitter, or Parler. Other networks are more likely to see neg negative opinions and actually judge those as equal or potentially better than fact-based opinions on the same topic because of our current environment and that going viral is now popular. We're also aware that there are active efforts of disinformation from domestic and for foreign parties that are trying to encourage people to be vaccine hesitant, reluctant, or refuse, which will make it more difficult to change our minds about vaccine acceptance and the need to move towards herd immunity from to actually prove, move through this COVID-19 pandemic. When people have hesitancies and trouble making decisions because of all the negative media, the amplification of disinformation, and the disability of knowing what's real and what's not, it makes it problematic to really develop and understand what is truth. This has happened in the early 20s uh, to 2010, when we saw difficulties related to children's vaccines, where one or two side effects were amplified. And so people were concerned that if they had a vaccine, 
Could their children develop autism or another problem or another side effect when the percentage or likelihood of that occurring was very, very small? And that's being repeated now, unfortunately, again. So in discussing vaccines and vaccine acceptance, words matter. How we discuss COVID-19 will be how we deal with COVID-19. Different groups have different priorities, and so different responses, and unfortunately, different outcomes. Some groups may experience COVID-19 differently. Many groups have lost friends or family, whereas other groups might think it's just the flu. Minoritized or urban and rural groups may have been affected in others whereas some groups might minimize or even deny COVID-19 or feel that it's a government plot. So if it's a government plot or not real, then my desire to inconvenience myself to help the others that might be, might be dying is actually minimized. And I might feel that in some ways the government is trying to restrict my thinking or my freedom or my rights. And so I won't listen or will be reluctant to follow through with what could really be helpful and important for all of us in society. There are groups then that differing the resources that are available to prevent COVID-19 differently. If you've been affected, our group has been affected by COVID-19, then they're more comfortable in wearing masks or social distancing are then taking the vaccine when it's available. But if you're a group that has minimized or denied it or feel that it's a plot, then you feel no need for these measures and you feel that it might be con inconveniencing you or that your rights might be violated. And so rather than to prevent the spread of the virus that could be deadly or dangerous to others, you feel that it might be an imposition on what you would want to do. The rest of the world recognize that all are affected by COVID-19, and initially all took measures to try to prevent the spread. But in watching the U.S., other countries are now having thoughts or changing too. And so we see vaccine reluctance, refusal, and outright protesting of the methods and resources that are available to prevent the spread of COVID-19. But unfortunately, the true information may not have been propelled in media, and disinformation may have been a target here. Because when we ask how do pandemic viruses happen and how do viruses spread, we realize that all viruses or pathogens travel across the globe with the jet stream. So that a virus might, might develop in Asian forests or the Brazilian Amazon or in African jungles they're traveled across and blown across the world from the jet stream. And so we see that all of us live together and all of us see what happens as one virus might start in one part of the world and then it may be blown around the rest of the world. And viruses travel along the jet stream from one country to another in a yearly pattern. In the map of our world, we see that viruses that may start on the Asian continent will move across Europe to America. And pathogens that begin in South America will travel across the jet stream to Africa and then Europe. And this is typically the pattern for all viruses since the beginning of time. And then how are viruses named or tracked? The importance of naming a vaccine is that it allows scientists to have an understanding of where the vaccine is going through those jet winds, where it might strike next, and how to warn and notify public officials to keep people safe. For example, the Spanish flu, in quotes, in 1918, was actually traced to have started on a U.S. air base in Kansas and then was brought to Europe by soldiers traveling in World War I. But because of the dynamic of World War I, that other countries were experiencing these outbreaks of the flu, but not really wanting to report it to decrease the stress or morale of the soldiers and those who were fighting at home to keep the world safe at that time. It was Spain who first reported these growing numbers of cases and deaths. And that's why the virus was inaccurately named the Spanish flu. This caused difficulties for the people of Spain as they were blamed for the virus that actually had started in the US and when researchers started tracking the virus and progressions, they were able to see that it had started in the U.S. and then moved to Europe as those were fighting for freedom at that time. 
we're also aware that humans are living in those previously uninhabited areas. And so researchers monitor all parts of the globe to see how humans are interacting with animals. And so the environmental changes that are happening in our planet that bring humans closer to previously uninhabited areas and the animals that live in those areas, so that bats, camels, other types of animals, we can detect any potential virus that might be starting in one area that could spread to another. And so that we can quickly prevent and notify public authorities to keep those viral hotspots from becoming problematic as soon as they might start. Another example is the flu vaccine that you take every year. That flu vaccine that we take in the fall is actually determined from the variants that we see that are active in Asia every year. Every year, the flu vaccine that you might take might be different because of the variants that are seen in other countries. And speaking of variants, the more cases of a virus or infection, the more likely for differing types of variants. They could be weaker or stronger than the original or wild type, but the danger here is that by decreasing the spread of the virus, we decrease the number of variants that can be deadly. And currently, there are three variants that have concern for scientists, and all are more contagious and deadly than the wild type. The good thing is, Currently, all of our COVID-19 vaccines prevent hospitalization and death from even these most problematic variants, which is why we're rushing to increase vaccine acceptance and the percentage of those that are vaccinated to decrease the likelihood of variants that are worse and might be less effective uh, with our vaccines. So here, the best way to stay healthy is to avoid the virus, take care of each other, using mask, hand washing, and social distancing. And when it's your turn and your spot to get the shot and get the vaccine for COVID-19.